second video in my micro series of two reviews of games about gladiators. Today we talk about Munera Familia Gladiatoria, published by the Italian publisher Albert Pavo. Uh, in this game, the players will take the role of managers of a gladiator team in ancient Rome. They will put together a strong team of fighters and helpers that help with managing the entire business. And with this school of gladiators, they will travel around Italy to fight in different arenas and trying to gain money and glory. This is a game where sometimes you play the role of the manager and some of the times when the fight starts you actually play the role of the gladiator, you feel that you are the carter in the arena, not just the one standing out uh, outside and seeing if the, the, if the investment is going to pay off. This is a game this is a game for uh, two to four players, but not really. You need four players to play. Let me tell a little bit about how the game plays and why you need four players. In this game, you will recruit two types of characters, the helpers and the gladiators. Uh, each player starts with an initial pool of gladiators and with an initial helper, and then at the beginning of each turn, you will draw new gladiators and helpers that will be placed face up for auction. The helpers have an initial starting price. You can now start an auction for one of them, uh, lower, uh, starting lower than the number indicated on the card. Uh, they have level of skill that goes from one to three, depending on how good they are at their job. And they can perform different types of tasks for you. Vectors will help your gladiators travel. Uh, the medicus helps your gladiators heal faster. The doctor is not a doctor, is a trainer, can help your gladiators fight better in a specific style and the lupe are prostitutes yes you need them around your barracks to uh, increase the level of obedience of your gladiators it may seem funny but if you think about it you are managing uh, convicted criminals that are sent in the arena to kill other people you cannot really expect these people to relax at night by just reading a book and if they don't have a good level of obedience most likely they will start fights among each other and they will get wounded before they even enter the arena. As for the gladiators themselves they also have a starting price, level of obedience is the white number printed there, stamina, number of wounds that they can take in combat, skill, number of rerolls that they have in combat, and charisma, which is a value that they will use when they will uh, bag the crowd to spare them in case they lose a fight in the arena. Your gladiators will be placed around your scoring board, which is also what you use to keep track of your level of glory throughout the game. First player to reach 15 points of glory is the winner. Um, the areas around the scoring board where you place the gladiators indicate the specific style in which each gladiator specializes. So when you acquire a new gladiator, you choose the style, you place the gladiator in the specific area, and you also give the gladiator a marker as a reminder of the style of the gladiator for when the gladiator is not attached to the board and also that marker indicates the level of experience of the gladiator. All gladiators start at the T level, trainee, and if they are good in the arena and if they win a lot they can level up and become better. And choosing the fighting style in which you're training each gladiator is very important because the gladiators can only fight according to very specific and very strict pairings. The Secutor can only fight against the Retiarius, the Oplomacus only against the Equimenus, the Mermillus only against the Trikes, and a Provocator can only fight against another Provocator. So having a large and diverse batch of gladiators that can fight in different ways is extremely important because it will allow you to participate to more shows to respond to more calls for gladiators. At the beginning of each turn, each player draws an event card. These events can be played later to generate different types of effects, and some are particularly powerful, maybe even a little too much, but they are usually interesting things. Then it is time to start the shows. Each turn, two or three new contract cards are revealed, depending on the number of players. Each contract card indicates the location where the show is going to take place. 
the number of different pairs of gladiators that you must be able to produce in order to accept the contract. These must be gladiators that are unspent and ready to fight. The card also, te also tells you the amount of money and the amount of glory that you gain by fulfilling the contract. A player chooses a card that uh, indicates a contract that he can fulfill, so he has to demonstrate that he has enough gladiators and that he can pay to reach the location of the show. There is a marker for each player indicating the position of the player's school on the board and to travel costs two coins per region. So a player chooses the uh, contract and then asks the players if they want to join him. Maybe nobody wants or can, then the player will use his own gladiators uh, to fight against one another to uh, fulfill the contract. Maybe another player only wants or can travel there, then the player will pay uh, the money to travel there and will also receive full amount of money and glory. Or if several players want to uh, join this show, they have to bid to decide who will uh, do it for the lowest amount of money. A player says, I'll do it for five. That one says, oh, I'll do it for four. Uh, I will do it for three. And they continue like this until a pl until everybody gives up but one or until a player attempts to fulfill the contract for uh, zero money. Um, so the player probably will lose money to travel to the location where the show is taking place, but that player still gains uh, uh, the full amount of glory, which is important because glory is what victory is based on. Then the schools that are present to the fight will have to go through a number of duels equal to the number printed on the contract card. For each such duel, each player sends in a gladiator according on the pairs that are allowed in the game and combat is resolved on this table here. You place the battle marker in the middle of the two victory tracks. You record the initial number of rerolls that each gladiator has. Then combat is resolved in a number of rounds during which each gladiator rolls a die. You compare the results and the gladiator that rolled the highest number wins. That round moves the battle marker uh, towards his victory box by the difference between the two rolls, one in this case, and the gladiator that rolled the lowest number receives a one which is recorded here on the one track. If the players roll the same number, the battle marker doesn't move, no wounds are inflicted, but the uh, approval marker goes up one box on the approval track, which represents how much the crowd is enjoying the fight. If the players roll the same um, the same number, then that means that the, the two gladiators are more or less equally skilled, it is unclear who is going to prevail, and the crowd gets excited, and that marker records precisely that. If a zero is rolled, that is bad because that means that an accidental death may occur and you do not want to kill your opponent by mistake. The crowd paid big bucks to be there and to decide whether the loser is going to live or die and you do not want to take that right from them. If you accidentally kill your opponent in the arena, you will receive less glory in the end. But if a zero is rolled, there's a procedure you have to roll, the uh, gladiator has to take a check and one of the gladiators may die accidentally. Also, the gladiators can use their rerolls to reroll dice if they do not like the results. And they keep rolling round after round, inflicting wounds and moving the battle marker until the battle marker reaches the victory box of one of two gladiators, then the gladiator is the winner, or until one of the two gladiators receives one wound more than his stamina, and at that point the gladiator surrenders and the gladiator is the winner. The winner gains glory and experience and the other gladiator has to ask the crowd to spare him. At a point, you total together the number of wounds that have been inflicted to both players. Here would be five. The number on the approval track, one, you go to six. Then you add also the charisma of the uh, loser. Uh, this would be two. There may be other modifiers, suppose that there aren't any in this case. Well, then you roll a die and you need to roll that number or less. Here you would need to roll eight or less. If that happens, the loser lives, otherwise the crowd sentences him to death. 
And this is a very smart way to simulate the opinion of the crowd, a very volatile theme. It is about how the crowd feels, but it works. If you had a duel where there were a lot of moments in which it was unclear who was going to prevail, in which a lot of wants have been inflicted, then it means that that was a spectacular fight. The crowd is satisfied, even with the performance of the fighter that lost, and they may be more inclined to uh, spare that fighter. If the fighter didn't last much, not many wounds were inflicted, that means that one of the two players really did not perform very well, managed to lose too easily, and then the total number that you roll against will be low, and that will represent how the crowd is, is disappointed by the fight, and how the crowd more likely will want to see some blood, at least during the execution of the loser. But while a fight is being resolved, what are the other players doing? Rolling their thumbs, yawning, and waiting for their turn to play? Not at all. The other players have something to do too. They can bet. They can bet on gladiator number one or gladiator number two. And trust me, at that point, they will follow very closely what happens in the arena because uh, the player that bet on the winner will double the money that was uh, committed. Otherwise, of course, if you bet on the loser, you lose that money. Not not only that, but uh, gladiatorial combats back then were dirty games. There was a lot of cheating, tampering, and bribing going on, and this game simulates that. In fact, players can also invest money to place coins in these boxes here to generate a specific effect. If you place a coin there, and then uh, at the end of a round, the battle marker that would move does not move. You're basically denying a successful strike to the winner of a round. If you do place a coin there, then a one that should be inflicted is not going to be inflicted, and this box here will allow you to reduce the die rolls of a player by one, and this other one can do the same, or can give an extra die roll to a player. The rulebook probably could use some polishing. There are just many pieces of information that are scattered around. They're not easy uh, to piece together in a single image. They're not easy to retrieve if you need to double check things. And you easily have the impression that there are just too many rules as you're learning the game and probably when you're playing the first game. I remember I was scratching my head very often trying to remember if a certain check would be passed by rolling above a certain number or under a certain number. But after a while everything started clicking and things started coming together when I realized how thematic the game is, how much the mechanics match the theme. And then you can use the theme as a reminder. For example, uh, you're the loser in a fight, you are hoping that the crowd will be merciful, then the number of wounds that you have is a good thing for you because it means that you fought a lot and then that means that helps you that you have to roll under that number. Uh, on the contrary, you're trying to heal your gladiator, then the more wounds you have, the harder it is, then that means that you have to roll above the number to be able to heal. And if you do this, if you figure out the connection between the theme and the mechanics, then the game becomes comes very smooth, it flows very well, but again, mainly it allows you to really appreciate the work that was done and that was behind this design in finding ways to reproduce the theme through the mechanics. And in fact, the theme is definitely there. The, the theme is very strong. The game is highly thematic to the point that sometimes in the most intense fights, you will almost have a role-playing quality. You will be the gladiator fighting in the arena. Why you need four players? Well, because with four players, you have so many different levels of interaction. You have the players fighting in the arena. You have the players outside of the arena that sometimes are fighting against each other. They're tampering and bribing um, in order to have their champion win so that their bet can pay off. And some of the times the two players outside of the arena are working to together against one of the players in the arena because they want to reduce the advantage of the leader. So many different levels of interaction that I cannot imagine the game being uh, um, nearly as fun with less than four. Disclaimer, I only put it with four, but again, I had such a good time and the game seemed so complete with four that I never had the desire to play it with a different amount of players. To me, this will be a four-player game 
only. Uh, in conclusion, this is a game that is fun to play, is highly thematic. Um, I like games that feature combat and other gamers prefer games that uh, allow you to make some money, that you reinvest to make more money. Well, this game has both aspects, best of both worlds.